Are you weary and looking for rest? Here's where you can find it. What is your life, my friend? Are you his? Are you feeling hopeless? Are you exhausted and looking for satisfaction in the ways of sin? You ain't going to find it. Has the world misled you and left you empty time and time again? Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. In John 6, 37, Jesus says, The one who comes to me, I'll never cast out. Do you hear him today, my friend? Do you hear him calling you? Come to me. There was nowhere to go for what you're looking for. Nothing else will truly satisfy. Come to me. You cannot save yourself. Come to me. Let me save you. Come to me. There are countless self-help books in existence. Every year, dozens of books are released offering you all kinds of solutions to the problems in your life. But it seems that none of these books truly hold the answers since they keep getting written and the problems of our world continue. Where do you get your answers? What drives your life? What sustains your life? Those are the very questions that Jeff Wong is asking today in our radio revival from Study the Word in Calvary Chapel, Lebanon. Turn to Titus chapter 3 as we look at the life we have in Christ. Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm really grateful and blessed to be able to share a message with you. If you have your Bibles, please open up to Titus chapter 3. We're going to be going over a section of Scripture, verses 3 through verse 7. I'll read it first, and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of just dissect it, and we'll just see where the Lord leads us. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, Titus. Chapter 3, it's toward the back of your Bible, uh, starting at verse 3 and ending at verse 7. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Huh. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Sounds like our world today. <laughs> But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. Not because of, right, of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. And um, I love this section of scripture. I love this portion right here. And it just reminds me uh, a lot of like um, of the days um, before I came to Christ. In verse 3, it says, you know, at one time we were foolish. And I remember um, before Christ, I was like full of worldly wisdom. Uh, you know, I'd read so many books and self-help books and things of that nature, and, and I was full of this worldly wisdom, which is actually foolishness to God. You know, the Bible will tell us that. And I believed my good deeds would kind of like outweigh my evil deeds on some like cosmic scale. Uh, it, it's really kind of foolish if you think about it. You know, um, eventually I, I came to the conclusion that I was so prone to do evil that, you know, heaven was a lost hope. I mean, I was, I couldn't go to 10 o'clock in the morning without sinning, I don't know, you know, in the, in the double digits of times, you know. And um, so this cosmic scale was not in my favor. I, I was very aware of that, um, being so prone to evil. And the world also misled me with all those self-help books and self-seeking behavior, you know, um, all those things that they only fed the lusts of my life. And before long, I was a slave to vices. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the world tells us, you know, to look within. You know, you need some self-esteem. You need, uh, uh, that's what's wrong with you. So everything was getting me to look at myself, and it was actually making things worse. 
And um, none of, you know, and none of the things really worked. They just made things worse. Um, and uh, I was a slave to myself and um, and drugs and alcohol made me feel good and sex and money. And so those were the things that I pursued and they became vices and I became actually a slave to them. And um, none of them satisfied. None of them. And they always left me, you know, empty and wanting more, you know, until the appetite of pleasure became so insatiable, I actually became angry, and I actually hated everyone and everything around me for not working. I even hated the drugs for not working. I hated the, 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 the people because they weren't satisfying me. The girls, you know, the, the money would, would flee so fast, it, it, it would just be a temporary high. And, you know, that's how the drugs were working too, 15 minutes of pleasure. And then you're left empty again, you know. Um, and I, I, was, I was very uh, dry and void of any, tiny, any kind of contentment. No satisfaction, Mick Jagger would say. <laughs> and um, all of this, you know, sounds like our world today. You know, it really does. You know, hating one another. You know, and, um, and, and being angry and, and you know, and, and caught up in all these vices. But, but God, verse 4, but when the kindness and love of our God, our Savior, appeared, right, Let's talk about that. I, 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 love, I love this. When someone I'm talking to says, I wish God would just reveal himself to the world and do a bunch of miraculous signs and show the world who he is and that he's real, then I'll believe, man. I tell him, like, yo, bro, you're right on the money. Preach it, brother, because that's exactly it. That's exactly what God did. He came to this world, revealed himself, and did a bunch of miracles to prove who he was so that we would believe. And, uh, you know, that's Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> that's it. And um, the truth is that the image of God, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and 4, 6 says, Christ who is the image of God, God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. You want to know who God is? Look at Jesus Christ. Look him right in the face. And the Bible will show us that and, uh, and shows us who he is. You know, um, the gospel is love and his kindness draws us to repent. Repent to turn from following the world's ways to following God's ways. And I used to think God hated me because he hates evil. The cross shows me the truth. The cross shows me that Jesus loves me, that God loves me. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. God showed me on the cross, I love you this much. He didn't hate me, he loved me. You know, and he, he showed that to me, you know, that love. And uh, verse 5, it says, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. You know, Jeff, what did he save us from? He saved us from hell. H-E double hockey sticks, you know what I mean? Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know, and hell, right, that's what he saved us from. A lot of people forget about that. You know, oh, Jesus died on the cross uh, to, to, to wash away my sins, right? But we, we forget about hell. He saved us from hell. You know, hell is a separation from God. Um, where there's weeping and there's gnashing of teeth, you know, so there's regret. There's a, a knowledge of, you know, man, I, like God tried to reach me so many times. He's been chasing me all this time, and 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 man, I, I'm I've got this pain. I'm, I'm weeping. I have regret. There's it talks about the worm that never dies. It's like a regret, you know. I can just imagine, uh, you know, an individual in hell saying, "God, I'm sorry. Uh, you were right. You were reaching, trying to reach me so many times." 
times, so many times I went to church and you gave me the truth and I denied it and I rejected it. I'm ready to receive it now. Hello? 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 God, are you there? Hello? 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 Nothing. Separation from God. Complete darkness. He saved us from that. He saved us from that. I'm grateful to our Lord Jesus Christ from that. And he saves us from the lives of Satan, the lies, and the world system, which is, you know, Satan's system, that tells us that we can save ourselves. Satan's way and the world system says, save yourself. That's what they told Jesus on the cross. Go ahead, save yourself. Nope. If he did that, then we would all be doomed. So, tells us to save ourselves and that life is all about me, right? Satan's system, the world system says life is all about me, myself, and I. Life without Jesus is hopeless and depressing. You know what I mean? If you're focused on yourself, there's a, you're going to be depressed. I guarantee you, listener, if you're my friend, if you're out there and you are depressed this evening and when you're hearing this, could it be that you are thinking of yourself too much? Could it be that you are self-centered today? Because that has been proven to bring people to a state of depression. And, and you know, it, no wonder that we run to drugs and alcohol, right, to get through life. Because we don't have Jesus. We don't have hope. And I, so I don't blame the world when they run to their vices because they don't have Jesus. What else would they do? Of course they're not happy. There's nothing. There's no purpose. There's, you know, you know, we listen to the system of the world that tells us to look at ourselves and that we came from monkeys. And this, it is a very depressing and hopeless world. And, and with that void of Jesus, I don't blame you if you go do drugs and alcohol. God saved me from that, though. I was, he saved me from drugs and alcohol because that's what I used to run to when I didn't have him. And, and he can save you, my friend. He can. Um, Jesus knew that we couldn't save ourselves. He knew that. So he came to this earth to do the job himself, to get it done himself, by giving himself as a payment for our sin. In his mercy, in his mercy, not because of our good deeds, even if I lived like Mother Teresa for the rest of my life, I would still have to pay for the curse of sin in my life. The curse that was passed down from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. That payment would mean hell. If I had to pay it, if I tried to save myself, the only payment is my life, and it would be hell. Isaiah 64, 6 says, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Or So, like, there is no, God doesn't see, my good deeds do not outweigh my bad. Please hear that. Um, only Jesus born supernaturally from a virgin without an earthly dad could, to pass on the sinful nature and, and the curse of sin could bypass that curse. He didn't have an earthly dad. So he, that curse of sin was not passed on to Jesus. He was sinless. And he's the only one who could make that payment of curse for the curse of sin. He's the only one who could save us. And he did. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You know, his death on the cross is where that transaction took place. That payment was made. When his blood poured out and washed over us from the curse of sin, sin and death was atoned for. It was paid in full. He paid it. We are saved. Christians kind of call that being born again, or and that's the new birth um, that this speaks of here. Before because of the curse of sin, our spirits were dead, okay? Um, how I can remember those days, I don't know about you guys, but, um, you know, they, they're so dismal. You know, I thought I was living life. I really did, you know. Um, but compared to now being born again, um, you know, after coming to believe in the work of our Savior, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, you know, it is, those days were so dismal. I, I clearly see that I, my spirit was dead. Um, but because of what Jesus did, the death, burial, and resurrection, I now know that I'm truly alive. And the resurrection is very important. I want to talk about that. And I urge you to study it as it is critical to this new life. Please hear that. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a historical truth. 
um, I was actually astonished when I found that there, there, we have more evidence of Christ's resurrection than we have evidence of George Washington. It's amazing, and, and you need to study that. The martyrs, even, of the early church also proved Jesus Christ's resurrection that thousands upon thousands were willing to die horrible, torturous deaths rather than deny the name of Jesus Christ. That speaks so loud to Jesus' resurrections. People don't die for a lie. They'll die for the truth. And the truth is that Jesus rose from the dead. They were eyewitnesses, and they saw it, and they were willing to go to, through horrible deaths, uh, being fed to lions, uh, their whole families, watching their families be fed to lions, and then, um, you know, and being killed themselves, you know, um, rather than deny Jesus Christ. That speaks volumes of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when we put our, um, when we put our trust in the work of Jesus Christ, we're given a new birth. We're born again and given a new life through the Holy Spirit. We are truly alive for the first time in our lives. Our spirits are now awakened, and we can live a new life with the Holy Spirit living through us. Oh, I want you to experience that, my friend. If you haven't experienced that, you need to experience that. That is new life. And read Romans 6 sometime. It'll explain that more in depth. That's my homework for you tonight or today. Read Romans 6. Um, but let's go to verse 6. He generously pours out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. So we, we come to believe, we come to put our trust in the work of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, resurrection, and then he pours out his Spirit in us. And, and listen, I love this term, generously pours out the Spirit upon us. Okay, look, being a former addict, I'm wired for extremes, and I'm glad our Lord Jesus gives us a full and healthy, poor, a healthy dose of the Holy Spirit. I, I never did anything in moderation, and I don't plan to do it now in this new life. Definitely not, especially if it's for God. Pour it out, Lord, for real. Fill me and keep it coming so that I can pour out on others too, Lord Jesus, please. Pour out your spirit. And the Holy Spirit of God makes his home in our hearts. We now become the temple, the temple of God. And it empowers us, the Holy Spirit, I say it, he empowers us to live a new life that is now being transformed from a hopeless, sinful life Right? We're very familiar with that. To a life that grows more and more to the image of Jesus Christ, full of love and kindness. We become more and more like him. Not just wanting to stop doing evil, but wanting to make him happy by the good things that his life was about. Loving and serving others. Giving, not taking Speaking the truth, no more lies, right? Loving, not hating, not to, we do all this not to earn his love, but in response to his love. It's a big, big difference. And listen, I see a lot of Christians make, you know, make this mistake. They, they kind of make Jesus a good addition to their life, kind of inviting Jesus in on their lives, spending, you know, some time with him here and there, you know. I think this is a fatal flaw for most because Jesus Christ is calling us to something far greater. He is calling us to be a part of his life, okay? Not Jesus a part of my life, right? That's great, no, what's greater is that we become a part of his life. The call is for you to become a part of what his life was about, to help him and be a part of what his life was about. And what is that? What was his life about? Saving the world. Saving the world. Can there be a greater call? I think not. I pray the Holy Spirit opens your eyes to realize that you haven't been seeing things in reality. And that you may not be seeing the big picture here. What an immense privilege we have to work with the creator of the universe. And have a relationship with him as he uses us to help save the world from eternal damnation. From hell. Wow. There is nothing greater than this call. This is so undeserved. 
We don't deserve it. I don't deserve this. I was his enemy my whole life. This is what we call grace. Undeserved favor. Getting what we don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Hell. That's what I deserve. But grace is getting what we don't deserve. Heaven. With Jesus, our Lord. I don't deserve all the wonderful things he has done for me. And check it out. He keeps doing these things every day. I kind of live in this like perpetual state of mind blownness. Jesus, just, you know, just when I think that he's done enough and he can't outdo himself, bam, he does. Outdoes himself every time. <laughs> I love it. I love him. And that's why I follow him. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Let me, let me rephrase that. Not because I have to, but because I want to. It's a response to his love that I want to do this. So let me ask you, you know, has he, you know, he, Jesus is trying to show himself and, and he's proved himself to you. Has he done that? He's done that to me over and over so many times that I am truly convinced that I am his. So what is your life, my friend? What is your life? Are you his? Are you feeling hopeless? Are you exhausted in looking for satisfaction in the ways of sin? You ain't going to find it. Has the world misled you and left you empty time and time again? Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. In John 7, 37, Jesus says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. In John 6, 37, Jesus says, The one who comes to me, I'll never cast out. Do you hear him today, my friend? Do you hear him calling you? Come to me. Oh, please come to me. There was nowhere to go for what you're looking for. Nothing else will truly satisfy. Come to me. You cannot save yourself. Come to me. Let me save you. Let me give you a new life. Come to me. If you're listening to this, I believe Jesus is inviting you to be a part of his life and experience life through him. How do I, how do, I do this, Jeff? Maybe you're asking. What, what do I got to do? I've, I've, I've been trying to go do this for years and I keep failing. Listen, all you got to do is ask. Ask. Pray this prayer with me. Pray it after me. Right? Just ask the Lord. Lord, let's, let's, if you, you're here, bow your head. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the work that you accomplished on the cross. Taking the curse of sin off of me and upon yourself and dying in my place. I believe in your resurrection and in your word, which says that you will give me a new birth and a new life. Please pour your Holy Spirit on me generously so that my new life may be about what your life was about, saving the world. Thank you for this gift and privilege of eternal life, Jesus. Now, my Lord and my Savior. Amen. It's as simple as that. We ask. And listen, congratulations, welcome to the family of God. It's, it's important, and I can't stress it enough, that you now learn how to live this new life. And the, let me tell you, the best way to do this is by seeking others who are doing the same thing and who can, you can do this life with. I can't stress that enough. Finding people to do this with. People who are on the same page. People who have given their life to Christ and who live for Jesus. Right? You get with them and you learn how to do this. Right? This is what we call discipleship. My suggestion would be to find a Bible teaching church and begin fellowshipping with others. So that, you know, maybe in a small group or something like that. But fellowshipping with brothers and sisters is extremely important. Right? For, listen, my friend. Please hear me. Make Jesus your life. Not just a good addition to your life. Not just an add-on. Make him your life. You want to experience the fullness of a life with Jesus, not just him as your savior? Make him your Lord. There's a difference. I thank him that he's my savior, but making him my Lord and master is different. Colossians 3, 4 says, 
When Christ, who is your life, appears. Hear that? When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You know, I can't stress this enough. Jesus, uh, when he is your Lord, life is about him and his mission, his business, being about our Father's business. What is your life? Your life is going to pass. The, the, the grass fades and the flowers die. You know, so is our life. It's just but a breath. God has given your life. He created you to worship and to serve him. And there is no greater call. There's no greater call. You, the American dream is not going to satisfy you. Serving Jesus and, and making him your Lord and being about his business, saving the world, is the greatest thing and the greatest call that he has on our life, that our life can possibly manifest to. So that's why you may be very unhappy and unfulfilled and unsatisfied and, and looking and searching in the ways of the world that it's really, are, are you seeing how foolish it is? Are you seeing how empty it is? Are you tired? Are you done? I'm trying to show you how to stop looking because I'll tell you where to find what you're looking for. What you, where you're looking for is in Christ Jesus. When Christ, who is your life, then you will appear. Let's make Christ our life. Let's make Jesus our life. Let's be about his business. I am so glad if you have made that commitment today and, and you have asked Jesus and put your trust uh, in his word and in his, the work of the cross, I congratulate you. You are now a part of the family of God. Now, let's get busy. Let's get about our Father's business. I love you. I'm praying for you. Father, thank you for this time. And I pray, Father, that those that have heard this message today, that they will really, truly take it to heart. It will become a part of their life, Lord. And, Lord, that your word would come alive in their lives. And, Lord, you would bring forth fruit in, these, in those who have accepted you and put their trust in you. And, Lord, that the fruit would glorify you and we would, and as our act of worship to you. Thank you. We love you. I love you, Jesus. Jesus, you're the man. You're the champion of our lives. We love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're listening to a special radio revival and a message from Jeff Wong called, What is Your Life? You'll find us on the web at ccleb.com. That's a great place to listen to more great Bible teaching. That's ccleb.com. You'll also find us on YouTube at Calvary Chapel, Lebanon. Hey, we'd also love to pray for you and hear your thoughts of this message. Please send us an email when you visit our website, ccleb.com. You can also call us at 717-273-5633 or write to us, 740 Willow Street, Lebanon, Pennsylvania, 17046. Again, our phone number is 717 273 5633. Don't miss the conclusion of our radio revival tomorrow. Mark Weber will be talking about going home to the promised land. This is a presentation of Calvary Chapel, Lebanon, Pennsylvania.